The Paris Eternals matchup with the LA Valiant pitted two star-studded DPS lineups against each other, with the Eternals rookie duo of Sparkle and Exe facing off against the Valiant's own rookie, KSP, as well as their tracer ace, Shax. Paris had taken an early lead by winning Nepal, and after a full capture during their attack round on Hanamura, they were looking to clinch the map win by holding off the Valiant and putting them on match point. On point B, Paris set up a unique defense to counter the Valiant, which we will be looking at in depth in this episode of Behind the Action. Pushing into Hanamura's second point has always been difficult due to the map's natural choke points. With one side of the map being pretty much inaccessible for a majority of characters, the two options are the entrance in the middle or the top right. The entrance in the middle is usually seen as a no-go due to there being multiple angles from which the enemy can set up and fire on your team. This leaves pushing into a small choke point on the top right hand side, which gives teams access to the high ground and some cover to replenish their health before pushing into the more difficult choke point on the stairs. But if a team does manage to push through and claim the high ground, they give themselves a very powerful position which allows them to pressure the point without the risk of taking fire from all sides. This means that on defense, teams like to set up on the high ground and force as many teamfights as possible to take place in the staircase choke point. For the Eternal though, they decided to try something a little bit different. Instead of having both of their tanks playing together, they split them apart. On the high ground near the staircase, they set up Orisa, Brigitta, and Genji, while Sigma, Batiste, and Widowmaker play on the opposite side of the map. This positioning is odd because the latter position is usually inaccessible to most heroes, which means that while one or two members of the enemy team might try to flank using this route, there will rarely be any major engagements there. What the Eternal is trying to do is not place too much value on the high ground, but rather constantly put damage onto the Valiant as they are trying to rotate through the choke point. The interesting thing about these two groupings is that they have two different methods of applying damage. The Orisa stack focuses on close range damage, with Genji and Brigitte using their abilities to deal heavy damage in the choke. Meanwhile, the Sigma stack is range oriented, applying damage from a distance. Take this opening push. As the Valiant start going up the stairs, the Eternal combine Halt with Sparkle's Dragon Blade to immediately force the Valiant to use Immortality Field. As this is happening, Hanbin moves from his position to the base of the stairs to apply more damage. This pincer move results in a fully surrounded LA Valiant. They are unable to push forward due to Sparkle's Dragon Blade, but if they retreat, they'll run right into the flanking Hanbin. As a result, the Valiant are slowly, methodically, and brutally decimated, forcing them to reset and try again. So, on their first push, the Valiant were caught off guard by the Eternal's positioning, but now they know where Paris will be. With this intel, they're going to have to adjust their game plan to actively contest the unusual defense. On their second push, the Eternal have once again split their positions. The Valiant have KSP situated on the opposite side of the gap near Hanbin and Fielder, and attempt to use Orisa's Halt and Hanzo's Dragon Strike to eliminate the duo. This is executed perfectly, catching the two off guard, but thanks to Fielder's Immortality Field, he and Hanbin are able to survive. The Valiant immediately pivot from this attempt and try to push back up the stairs on the other side. As the Valiant begin to push in, the Eternal's Orisa grouping starts to fall back off of the high ground. The Valiant chase them down the stairs, but Fielder emerges and pops his Amplification Matrix. The double healing proves to be a godsend for the other Eternal stack who are stuck in a corner and getting pushed by the Valiant, before Sparkle generates another Dragon Blade that leads to the Eternal swinging the team fight back in their favor. It is worth noting that Hanbin's positioning during this team fight constantly denies KSP any access to the high ground, preventing him from contesting Exe or gaining a firing line on the other members of the Eternal. But the Valiant are not to be discouraged, and on this push, they decide to throw a majority of their team at Hanbin and Fielder directly. As they push in from the right side high ground, they cross the catwalk to the other side. Hanbin and Fielder see this, and they immediately begin to pull back to try and bait the Valiant even further. As Rain and Shax push in, Hanbin immediately uses his Gravitic Flux to catch Rain out. This allows Hanbin to get a quick elimination before landing accretion on Shax, which nets the Eternal a second elim and stops the Valiant's push in its tracks. The Valiant are probably pretty annoyed at this point. It seems that no matter what they do, Paris's Fabian tactics means that they continue to evade their pushes 
only fighting on their own terms. On their third push, the Valiant once again try to combine their Halt and Dragon Strike to catch Han Bin and Fielder off guard. Unfortunately, it proves unsuccessful, as the Dragon Strike just misses, leaving the Valiant to send Shaxx off to flank while the rest of the Valiant try to push the stairs and onto the point. Shax is able to dodge through Hanbin and Fielder's attacks and finish off Fielder before Hanbin is able to eliminate him. This battle on two fronts spreads the Eternal thin, and they are forced to concede the high ground and allow the Valiant some map control. As this happens, Hanbin's respawn timer is up and he's free to rejoin the fight, collapsing LA's attack and repelling them once again. The Valiant try on their final push to send both of their DPS players after Hanbin and Fielder while the rest of their team pushes the staircase. However, Fielder has built up another amplification matrix, and as the Valiant push in, Fielder pops it, allowing him and Han Bin to wreak havoc on the Valiant's flank. The Valiant are able to clear the Eternal off the high ground, with the exception of Sparkle, who waits until Han Bin and Fielder burst down the Valiant's Baptiste before dashing in to secure the kill. This is all while Han Bin stands guard and denies Shax and KSP any access to the high ground which buys Exe and the rest of the Eternal all the time they need to casually pick off the Valiant and secure the point for Paris. This hold by the Eternal is an example of well-utilized space and map positioning. First and foremost, the Eternal take advantage of the map's natural flanking routes and put out constant damage into their opponent's weak points. The presence of choke points and the lack of a Lucio in these compositions also means that team rotations are slower and more vulnerable. With that in mind, the Eternal have Han Bin and Fielder sit on their flanks, knowing full well that they'll have plenty of time to burn the Valiant to the ground. This hold was all about situational awareness, map control, and excellent execution to frustrate the Valiant and secure a perfect hold on the way to a match victory. Dreamer goes down, try to make something happen with the Wrecking Ball. Another Dragon Blade! Like he's, he's got a blade like every other fight. Right now though, he's just admiring the sheen of it. Doesn't have to do a heck of a lot. Exe sits back, doesn't have to worry either in the Paris Eternal. And that is an absolute steamrolling. Sparkle, oh. 16 final blows, 3 deaths, 37% of his team's damage. And that's not to mention that Hanbin and Exe both have 11 final blows. Like Hanbin, we talked about his Sigma map, that you know, not having as much success with double shield, but that looks so easy for them there. Thanks for watching. Let us know in the comments what you think the Valiant could have done to secure the point, or whether the Eternal just had them figured out. My name is Jonah. Thanks for watching.